Welcome, everybody, to another episode of Adeptus Ridiculous. My name is Bricky, my co-host is DK, and today we are doing a special book club episode that is entirely dedicated to the reading, reviewing, and discussing of books in the Warhammer universe. But before we start, if you are a patron or would like to become a patron, one, thank you, or two, check out the description and go to patreon.com slash Adeptus Ridiculous, where you can get fantastic new stuff, including HD posters every month, generally with boobs, as well as access to our Discord, great emotes, and, of course, most importantly, our love and support, because we are just that cool. Ooh. Hey, Ooh. Look, look at you. That was good. That was a that was a solid 10 out of 10 intro. You I, I stumbled a little about bit. It. Nah, that was good. That was I, solid. I stumbled a little bit. There was a little falling in there. There was and... a little, but that was that was that was like a professional intro. Well done. Everybody give D er, give yeah, ah. give me a round of applause. I will take the round of applause for you because I have set the template for a good intro, obviously. Yeah. Uh, DK, where can I get some merch? Oh, yeah. Orchidate.com and get yourself some legally distinct Adeptus Ridiculous merch. Uh, there are dice there. Uh, hey, Bricky, is there any kind of discount going on right now or is that over? Oh, that was over. That ended in January. Okay, fuck it. Just go get yourself some sick merch at Orchidate.com. Um... <laughs> Yeah, there, there's some. I mean, there's the there's the hoodie. I'm literally wearing the black hoodie right now. It's great, best material, wonderful. Ooh, Check new stickers too. Don't forget oh, the new stickers. And new stickers based on the emotes that you can use in Discord or if you are a high lord on the YouTube's when we stream there on Thursdays and the weekend. Air quotes. We don't even do it every third. Damn it, DK. Well, we it do just, it sometimes, unless just, some... just when we stream. Sure, but usually we try to stream the day after an episode. That's usually a thing. we try, but Shy ruined it last time, so. Well, I mean, stuff happens. You know, we're, there there are lives that need to be lived, and you know. Yeah, yeah that's true. Idea. But you can get speaking, speakers of those emotes anyway. Yeah, go speaking ahead. Speaking of lives and living, <laughs> and dead and dead, twice dead. Uh, we're we're a book club. Uh, today. <laughs> Twice Dead King Reign, the sequel to the absolutely outstanding Twice mm -hmm. Dead King Ruin, uh, probably my favorite Necron book, beating out Infinite Divine just barely. Okay. Um, yeah. And uh, also we have a book club, or no, we don't even have a book club episode on that one. We did an episode on Ultix himself yep, full after episode. that one. Yep. And uh, would recommend checking that out if you have not read Rain yet already to get a little bit of context. Yeah. Uh, we also had the wonderful Richard Reed on for an interview a bit ago. He uh, yeah. was able to to talk a little bit as he is the voice actor for the Audible versions of both of the books mm -hmm. and Infinite Divine as well. So mm -hmm. pretty cool. Lots of lots of lots of stuff to check out. But oh yeah. So Twice Dead King Rain came out. Just a little bit ago, less than a month old, I think, give or take. Mm -hmm. And uh, we both finished it. And yep. DK, what are your thoughts on this one? Uh, yeah, I am, I'm very conflicted about that, Rain. Same. I am mixed. Like, there are some really, really cool moments that happen in the book. But it also feels really, really repetitive at the same time. Like, they are just constantly running away from the Imperium. And it's like, oh my god, if we don't find some way to get ahead of the Imperium, we're all gonna die! The the, the dynasty's gonna die! And it's like, oh hey, we found a way to get ahead of them. Uh-oh, the, the Imperium's still on our tails, we're about to do some big revelation. Oh, but the Imperium, we gotta find a new way to get ahead of them. Oh, we found another way ahead of them, hooray! And it's just like, you lather, rinse, and repeat that for, like, almost the entire book. And... I don't know. It, it 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 got a little tired after a while of just you know. Oh, just let's run away from the blood angels. Oh, there's the Lystragonian again. Oh, blip, 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 and it's I don't know. I I'm less. I'm not as annoyed with the repetitiveness. I I can I can use the idea of the repetitiveness to like you keep putting in these situations over and over again, and its repetition is meant to test Ultic's kingship. Uh, yeah. And that's why it slowly degrades over time. Um, he was a bad my, king too, by the way, he's a terrible. He was a bad. He was a terrible king, and then it's kind of, kind of the point. He's a he's yeah. a young he's a young asshole who doesn't know what to do. 
Um, but I, so we, after we did our Twice Did King Ruin review, we actually got a, a really nice message from Nate Crowley, the author. Mm. Uh, he was very pleased. He actually, he actually um, uh, sent me a copy of the Severed book. Um, um, which is about Demosaur Zandrek and Oberyn, which I want to oh. I'm going to read soon. It's uh, it's not on Audible, but it's at least I don't think it is. Okay. Um, but he sent that over. Super nice. I, I wanna I wanna mention that because he seemed like a really kind guy, and I and I feel terrible that I'm I'm gonna be a little harsh on this book because I have I have a decent couple of problems with it. Well, even to our friends, we're gonna be honest. We're not going to sugarcoat. We're just going to give you our honest, you know. We are assholes to each other, are we not? Oh, God, yeah. <laughs> oh, it's like that's even a question? <laughs> I I feel like Ruin was a, a really compact, well-written book. It, it had a very clear opening, a very clear ending. It had great setup, great mm -hmm. payoffs. There was a lot of good back and forth. Um... The entire time I was reading Rain, my mind was going, I miss Jaceras. Ah, uh, yeah. Jaceras would have would have really added a lot to it, I think. Yeah. Uh, his character, that dynamic. Mm -hmm. uh, and so the idea of the of the tragedy, this big tragedy, this fall, really sold well in the whole Necron world. And then we got to Rain, and I kind of felt like we didn't know where to go. Like, what do we do now? Yeah, and it was just, and, it yeah. was almost a comedy of errors. And, and to the point of, like, I, there are parts in this book that I really like. Agreed. There are parts of this book that I don't like. Mm -hmm. But there's nothing that I can point to that I overall find really, like, bad. There's yeah. nothing I can specifically point to and say, this is just a terrible scene. I hated this part. There was, it was, like, the pacing like, things yeah. would happen and then be concluded really fast, or you'd think this would be happening, but then it didn't, and then you think there'd be more emphasis on this or that, and that's where it kind of lost me. There's some great parts. The The last hour and a half in particular are is very good. Oh, yeah, definitely. Um, kind of, beef, uh, they've been hinting, they were hinting at that big reveal at the end for, I mean, that was set up, like, even in, uh, even in Ruin. You could kind of be like, oh, you know, they, they kind of laid the groundwork for that uh, big reveal at the end. It's it's been in the works. It, so it it's wasn't been a works. huge surprise when it happened to me. Like it was, you could you could kind of see it coming. Though, um, yeah, the, I guess because the beginning was solid. Like the first two to three hours was was a little slow and meandering, but so was Ruin. Yeah, yeah. Um, and so I kind of expected it to be set up, but then that the the second act, the middle part, really. I felt really was tonally off and a bit tonally inconsistent and just mm -hmm. kind of uh, here there. Um, anyway, we'll get we'll get into it, I yeah, guess. Because yeah. yeah. uh, so Ultix is now new king. Uh, <laughs> yeah. He's been he's new king. He's on the A crops, an enormous fucking Necron vessel, and they are running away, very like running away in space, Last Jedi style. Oh, definitely. Um, from the oh, Imperium. that's the perfect example of what it's like. It's it's like the Last Jedi in their futile attempts to run away from the big bad scary empire. Yeah, yeah, but but comparing this to the Last Jedi is a disservice in its own oh, right. Oh, absolutely not. They're God, not God the same, no, they're not the same quality level at all. It's just sort of the same backdrop, right? It's yeah. a very similar premise. Them yeah. running away, space things, and figuring out what to do. Um, but Ultix is there. He is struggling with leadership mm. as the king. Mentep, the crypt deck is uh, being secretive and weird. Um, <laughs> yeah. uh, he's a sussy is, baka, yeah. He's a little sussy. Yeah. But Yenik is falling to the curse, but he's the admiral. He's mm -hmm. trying to keep it all under wraps. Meanwhile, he's being stalked by a golden figure with one eye, constantly staring at him mm -hmm. uh, the whole time, and uh, which is like the disfract. And basically, yeah, given human or given Necron form. Yeah, and they're trying to do. They're trying to figure out what to do with it, uh, yeah. how to handle it, um, and and that's that's the overall premise, and it's it's it starts off with like, like the repetition part you mentioned. I, I think it's definitely more of like a each scenario, it adds to the difficulties slash ineptitude of Ultix as a as a king. Yeah, he's a bad king. He's a bad king. He's a really and, bad and, king. It wasn't until the end where he became a better king. 
Yeah. Um, and that's kind of the I, the idea, and it slowly shows his his difficulty. Like yeah. in the in the beginning, they're running away from uh, the Imperium, and he has a, a petty squabble with like an old childhood rival. Uh, oh yeah, this yeah, like yeah. lady lord, I forget her name. Yeah, it started with a D. It was like duh, yeah, but yeah, yeah, yeah. It doesn't matter what her name is. Yeah, and, and then they like duel, and he kills her because he yep. thinks that they were uh, she was broadcasting their locations of the Imperium. Yep, but she wasn't. And no, she was not. Then that 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 reveal is an interesting one. Yeah, so the, um, they like use her ship as like fuel, and then she's like stranded, and then she's gonna get like overrun by the Imperium. But no, but she was gonna like legitimately help sacrifice herself. Oh, that's for... right. Yeah, she was gonna fly right in and destroy them, like destroy herself and the ships. And and he was like, "No, you're a fucking traitor. You're trying to take the glory from me." And blah, blah, blah. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, it was it was a little a little bizarre in that whole situation. But like, okay, uh, you know, old six is an inept king. He's kind of we. He's kind of angry and and very uh. He's kind of jealous. He doesn't really know how to lead properly. Yeah. Um. But there, there's a new cast of characters that arrive. Oh, not necessarily new, but some more. Uh, we get a lot more Lysicor in this mm. one, and I'd mm. argue he's the standout character of the <laughs> damn entire book. <laughs> well, for a lot of it. He he doesn't have a ton of screen time. Yeah, in the in the second act, he kind of just fades off and does his, his own, own thing. thing. Yeah, yeah. But but it's just fun every time he's on screen. He's <laughs> every time he's there, actually in the book. I'm having a good time every mm. time he's there. His his antics. This this like hey, I can like assassinate you and people if you want. Like if I kind of want to do yeah. that. He's like no life cycle. He's like oh. But and then he's like, his, his growing like canoptic army. <laughs> he has this this enormous <laughs> army of wraiths and scarabs, and he's just going around like, hey, you're gonna, I'll just deal with them. Don't worry about it. And then he's just mm-hmm. moving through, like the, the what was it, the trebuchet, and he's just murdering Mechanicus oh, guys. Yeah. Like pop, 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 pop. He's like, oh, he's you like, know, you know the, you know the trebuchet is gonna be like covered in troops. He's like, yeah, it's fine. I can handle it. Don't worry. I got, yeah, it. I, I got. It. I have friends. Uh, and, and then, then the, oh, go ahead. I was just gonna say, uh, uh, Ultix is so fucking worried about him. He's he's like, uh, Scarab, could you keep an eye on him? Cause I, mm, I mm, I'm not, I'm not a hundred percent sure that he's not gonna try and like betray us. But I kind of need him to go on a killing spree. So, uh, mm, please, please keep an eye on him. Make sure he doesn't do anything evil, too evil, too evil. Yeah. The um. That actually is another thing I want to mention. The, the scare no longer having his sub minds, I think, was a real blow to the to the oh, a real God, blow yeah. to the book. I really liked the sub minds. I think they added a ton to his character in the first book. A mm-hmm. ton. And having them basically be all pushed into a tiny scarab and then relegated to background. He, yeah. The scarab is barely in the book. Yeah, it, it only pops up a couple times for uh discussions with Ultics, but yeah, you know, now that I think about it, like, as I was reading Rain, a lot of the time I was like, man, something's missing. Like, I really liked Ruin, and Rain is, is it's still good. It's still a good book. But I was like, man, something's missing. And I, I, I think it's the submines. I think it's not having that dispute with all of his submines, especially when he's in such a conflicted state of, like, not knowing what to do and not knowing how to lead. Having, like arguments with his submines would have really added uh, a lot to this book, I think. So I, I, I absolutely I would, ag- I would agree about the submines being gone being a huge blow uh, to the overall vibe of the book. Like, yeah. Kind of kept him in check, too, sometimes when he was getting out of hand. Mm-hmm. Um, there's a couple other characters added, though. Uh, we have uh, Packet, who is his Lich Guard, who doesn't have a whole lot to do with the book. But mm-hmm. um, then you have my favorite character, which is Zoltanek. <laughs> um Zoltsenek yeah. is great. Um he I think he adds a lot cuz he's he's cut he's a prince. He's not a king. Mm-hmm. Um of the Ogdebek dynasty. Mm-hmm. Uh which is the the copper clad Necrons which is a super cool concept of having a bunch of lich guard with war hammers. Oh yeah. G- giant war hammers instead of goddamn um sides and stuff like yep. he's just this big ass necron with a big fucking hammer 
He's voiced really well too. I I love his voice and just his uh, mannerisms of talking in the third person all the time. In the third person and in the hypotheticals, he's <laughs> yeah. like, it's like, ha! Huh, does Zoltanek King believe Ultik's a fool? No, <laughs> but he believes Ultik is misguided. Is Ultik's king a bitch? Zoltanek thinks so, but we can fix it. <laughs> he's, he's always got that thing. It's like, is, the, is Zoltanek minorly sus? No, twas green who sabotaged the ship. <laughs> twas green. Emergency he, meeting, Zoltanek <laughs> thinks. <laughs> he's, he's really, he's really good. He's a great addition. Mm -hmm. And because I know uh, he has, he has a, a nice little moment where he, he mentions his, uh, his prior, um, the their Pharon was, uh, was a matriarch. Yeah. And then I remember Otex made some statement. It's like, oh, I thought it was a patriarch. And Zoltanek's like, no, that changed. And I'm like, oh. Huh. huh. Neat. Cool. Interesting. Yeah. yeah. And then it, you get you get, you get you a little 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 bit of that going on in there. People probably yeah. appreciate that. Oh, sure. and and they don't. It's not egregious or annoying. Yeah. Nice and perfect. Yeah. But it was cool seeing uh, cool seeing Zoltanek. Just really great, really great addition. Oh. Yeah. Um, I loved the Technomancer. The Technomancer. Uh, oh, I forget. oh, 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 right. Uh, Nagesh, Nageshkin, Nageshkin, I think. Yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. The really monotone, never really explains everything. He's just like, can can you can you can you fix the engines? No. Wait, no. Oh, it's like, sure? Why why not? Broken. Yeah, but can, can you fix it? But, mm. Yes. How long will it take? Three out three days. It's like, we don't have three days. Then I cannot fix it. <laughs> Zoltan, how do you put up with her? Yeah. Jesus. <laughs> She's super fun. I, I every time, you know, it kind of gets like a little sass to Ultix. Yep. And I, I appreciate that. I think you need that kind of character who kind of gives a little little pokey. There's, there's a lot of great side characters in this. Yeah, there are. In this book. In fact, I argue that the best character side characters actually my, our main trio of Ultix. Yenek and Mentep are are kind of my least favorite of the three uh, of the characters. All the side characters yeah. outside of them. Well, Yenek is pretty great at the end, but yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, all the side characters, I I love their inclusion. And I mean, Ultix is a fine character. You know, he's sure. fine, but you know, you're annoyed with him because he's being Ultix. Bad king. He's, he's, he yeah. makes a lot of bad decisions through the course of the book. So it's it's hard to kind of really like Ultix because it's just like, oh, Ultix, come on, man. You're being a real idiot right now. You, oof, oof, oof. And then Zoltanek comes in and is an absolute Chad and it's like, oh god, I love Zoltanek so much more than Ultix. Oh my god. What a what a, what a a beast. Let's go. Ultix feels like what I think he is, which is a, a, a guy who who got biotransference at 18 years old and never really grew up. Yeah. And he has no idea how to rule. Yeah, he really doesn't. Which is the point of the book, obviously. Yeah. It's to show yeah. that he's a bad king. That's the whole point. <laughs> and, and boy and is his, he. <laughs> and boy is he. And, and boy, how he gets, howdy does he do that. And how he kind of moves his way through. But um, there's there are some good moments. I, I par Oh, Baraka. Uh, I liked yeah. Baraka a lot. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, but like as it moves on, you know, the they kind of go through their little, their little running away from the Imperium. They're like jettisoning all their cargo. They're sucking away ships' energy. Mm -hmm. Um, they finally find a Mefrit trebuchet. Yep, which yeets them damn far away, that away from the Imperium. Yeah, it's just like a catapult that just yeets them into space at a really high rate of speed. Yeah, which also has them raiding a whole bunch of Mechanicus ships, which. Actually, has our our part where where Neff dies. Yeah, Neff goes which, out like a champ. Yeah, but he he just kind of went out. There was really no build up or or like he didn't do anything super heroic prior. There was no like emotional anything. He just kind of walks out, and within like two pages, he's gone. Yeah, it, it felt it felt really unearned. If I'm being totally honest. Yeah, a little bit. He, Almost like, ah, oh, we don't know what to do with Neth anymore, so let's just have him go out heroically, uh, sort of being the reason that uh, the king is saved. Yeah, he felt like he just kind of died like they like almost like they needed to kill him for a quota or something. It was really <laughs> I, I, I was really unsatisfied with his death. Yeah, I was just satisfied that Neth had something important to do because I, I, I like Neth. 
I like Nat's weird uh, voice. That that's actually what I think made me sad. Is I like Nef too, and I wish he had more to do and something more heroic. Yeah, because he's kinda really ran the... out of things for him to do. Yeah, yeah, he's kind of the only real sacrifice I can think of. Uh, um, yeah, because other people die, but <laughs> yeah, unwillingly. Yeah, but then not yeah, not of their own accord, but yeah. um. But then, like, what was it? They they get yeeted all the way to, um, what's the name of that place? The, uh, the Carnotite, which is Mentep's oh. old world that he did some fucked up experiments on things. Yeah. Um, and they met with the the warlock of Carnotite. <laughs> yeah, that warlock though. Holy shit! Another amazing <laughs> side character that yeah. I fucking loved. <laughs> Another side character that's way more interesting than Ultix, yeah. He was, dude, the fucking, the fucking warlock was a baller. I thought he was so cool. Oh, yeah, he was, he was nightmare fuel, too. He was a force of nature. That, Seriously. With all, like, the, the, the wires going everywhere and, like, just, he's, like, manipulating the planet to his will. And it's like, whew, okay, okay, buddy. He, he was, Show uh. Off much? Jesus. He was literally turning, he turned the prior Pharon into a Crypto Thrall, and then it's just controlling him. And then he, like, stops controlling him, and the Crypto Thrall just starts screaming violently, and he re-controls yeah. him, and he's like, hey, see, no more screaming, it's fine. Hooray, he's fine, hooray. Oh, that's, yeah. That that part was fan, was really good, I liked the Warlock stuff a lot. It's a shame, oh. it's a shame they didn't uh, do more with the Warlock, and they just kind of were like, yeah, cool. And the Warlock was like, hey, Mentep, uh... Here, remember some stuff, why don't you? And it's like, oh, okay. And you're just gonna leave the warlock now? He was really cool. Maybe maybe we wanna do more on the warlock? No? Okay, bye bye. Yeah, no, I guess we're leaving now. I it's guess we're it's leaving, yeah. I find that a lot of the time. I, I want more of certain characters, but they're not like I don't get enough of them. Mm hmm Um It's that pacing again. It just feels the, like the you pacing. don't get enough time with him and it's just like, but he was so cool, where are we going? Oh, yeah, things things are 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 feel like they're being set up and then dropped. Like yeah. like things happen too quickly. Yeah, um, agreed. Because like, oh, we need to go to Carnotite because I did all these things because I'm Mentep and mysterious and I've got problems. And then they meet the Warlock and he's like, ah, we need to go here now. And like, there's not much time to process everything. Yeah, definitely. Um, and that's kind of the big like. It's not the second act low point. I think it's maybe the click into Act Two. Where they learn how to go on something called the Ghost Wind, yeah. And the, that part, this part is, is a little bugged me a little. But so the Ghost Wind is a method of transportation utilized by the Flayed Ones, which, yeah. um, if you actually in game, that was an old thing for a while. Is the lore was that Flayed Ones had their own pocket dimension their own special realm and that's why in game you can like teleport them because they they come out of that realm and they're ready to, to cause problems you know right right so that concept that whole idea is it, still on board mm -hmm. um we're still we're still right on that and, and so they go in the ghost wind in order it's sending them to drazak yes and and drazak is the home of the flayed ones so to speak, there is a there is even a stratagem in the game called Shadows of Drazak, which yeah. is uh, like a minus to hit on flayed ones or something. Yeah, and they're like worried about meeting the uh, the the Bone King. Was Bone like, King. What was his name? He had a name. It was like Varla something, the Bone King, and they were they were like, oh god, we don't want to deal with him. Oh no, who knows what the Bone King is gonna? Oh god, the Bone King, flayed ones, right? Um. So, so I don't, I forget, yeah, they, they didn't want to go to Drazak at all yeah. because they're Trazen scared of the illness. Really, really didn't want to go to Trazak. He was very upset when he found out that they were uh, on their way to Trazak. Wait, did you say? Did you say Trazen? Trazak. Drazak. Trazak. I, I do think I was getting it a little uh, mixed up with Trazen because I kept. Hearing I thought so. I kept hearing Trazak in the book, but. Yeah. Oh no! Yeah, no. It's it's Drazak. Tra okay. Yeah, I kept hearing Trazak, and I was like, "That sounds like a good place for Trazen to be." Yeah. Anyway. <laughs> <Or> anyway. <laughs> um, uh, though there's a couple parts in the the ghost when they that get that annoy me. Like, well, for one, 
uh, Ultix opens up the area beneath Mentep's workstation, and uh, he finds yeah. a bunch of fucking meat and a yeah. bunch of flayed ones, I think. And he's yeah, like, he does. And he's like, oh, we want to cure them or something at some point. So we're not gonna kill them all, you know, despite you wanting that. And this is like his big spiral down. Oh yeah, this is the big, big like uh, sort of. I don't want to call it a reveal, but yeah, once he breaks that sarcophagus and it's like, what's all this? That's kind of yeah, big. Well, like he's he really starts to go south. Well, he kills Mentep, which he sure does. Which I I I don't I don't know if he's act. They kept saying like, oh my god, you killed Mentep, you killed Mentep. Mm -hmm. I can't believe you killed Mentep, and they kept saying it. So yeah. much that I'm like, oh, there's no way he's dead. This is so obviously a bait and switch. Yeah, it, it definitely did seem like they were going to do something where it's like, oh, actually, Mentep was already inflicted by the curse and cutting him in half did nothing. And he just blah, 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 blah. And I mean, but, I, guess, I guess there is kind of a reveal later that uh, he well, is. Yeah, well, that yeah. doesn't really count, though. That'd be like killing Ultix and saying the scarabs are him. Yeah, I know, but uh, that's kind of like the big reveal. It's like, oh, there's still a piece of Mentep here. Woo, 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 woo. And, but it, it felt like it yeah, felt it, like so obvious. Like, oh, he's so alive. Like they kept saying, oh, don't worry, he's dead. I thought they said so much that I thought they were trying to they were trying to impress the fact that he wasn't. Yeah, like they were gonna be like, oh, no, he's fine. Look at this. This is this is how we cure it. We found the cure. Hooray! Hooray! Yeah, I, I was so shocked that he was he was dead <laughs> despite yeah. despite it all despite being such an important character and basically you know being the one person that could talk some sense into ultix and give him some sagely wisdom it's just like nope he got his ass beat he got his ass whooped um and and then yennek gets put on like a like a derelict vessel with all the flayed ones and just jettisoned exiled out of, yeah. yeah yeah literally exiled out of, into space mm-hmm uh, which is not great. Nope, that's not great. And and th that's when the ship really kind of starts to turn on him because Yennick was like the foundation of the Acrops. Everybody was kind of looking to Yennick because like, oh, look at look at Yennick. He's fighting this thing off so well. Oh, there, we always have a little faith as long as Yennick is here. And then once Yennick is gone, Ultix is like, uh-oh. I'm getting a lot of funny looks now. What the fuck? Yeah, like Psychor is like, hey, everyone kind of wants to kill you. <laughs> yeah. It's, just nobody, saying nobody trusts you buddy um but but then there's the the big reveal that okay well a couple things happen one and this uh, like this warhammer it, nothing makes sense mm -hmm. but this bugged the shit out of me the imperium finds them in the ghost wind i am so glad that you brought that up because i okay. have no idea how the imperium and the blood angels even got into the ghost wind like how do they the Necrons don't understand this tech, and they're the fucking Necrons. Yeah. How in God's name did did they get in? I I don't yeah. understand. Like I, I I get the idea that they were uh they were tracking the Acrops' movement because uh uh Ultix got his gold uh he got his gold coat by stealing some gold from the Imperium that had some, like, bone fragments in it from, like, the... Bones of the or whatever. Saints. Yeah, it had bones of the Saint in it. And there was, there was there's even a part where, like, uh, some Imperium psyker slave is looking at him and all he can sense is, like, the... I guess he's blind or something or he can't see well, but he's a psyker, so he can sense the bones of the Saint. He's like, oh, holy Saint! And he's like, what the fuck is wrong with this guy? Um, yeah, like, like Psychor has, like, a has like a can of, of human. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and he's just like, hey, I got a present for you. And it's like, it's a psyker. And Packet's yeah. like, what the fuck? Yeah. What the fuck is this? Get it away now. Yeah. <laughs> and it had been, been going insane in its little coffin box. And But yeah, it's like, even even if you can trace the, trace the Acrops, it's like, okay, they, they literally went to a parallel dimension. Okay. What, how are, like, if they don't even know how they got into the ghost wind because Mentep got them in because Mentep got the knowledge of it from the Warlock. How the fuck did the Imperium get in there? Did they just psyker themselves in? Did they just use a shitload of psychers and just warp their way in? It's never explained. And no. even though they they know nothing about the Ghost Wind, the, the Imperium doesn't, and yet somehow their technology works better in the Ghost Wind than the Necrons' technology. What? They're, they're chilling. 
They, yeah. they are they are surprisingly doing well during this entire period of time. Yes, they're really well. They're they're catching up to the Necrons. The Necrons are in complete disarray and depression because like, oh shit, they're catching up. Like we 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 gotta we gotta shred parts of the ship. We gotta you know we gotta jettison. Like they get they get, they just dunk a bunch of their warriors. They just let a bunch of warriors go because they're too heavy. And they're like, oh, at some point we'll reanimate them. It'll be fine. It's it's it was really bizarre. It's really like, weird it's, that it worked. Yeah, it's super bizarre that like somehow the Imperium followed them into the Ghost Wind. Of all the of all the things, you would think they would be safe in, in that of all of all things, but I guess they. They still needed the conflict, though I think conflict aboard the ship would have been equally fine. Oh, yeah, definitely. Like, without Mentep, they're essentially stranded in the Ghost Wind because he was the only one that knew how it worked. That's the only person the Warlock gave any information to. So without Mentep, you're just sailing on a wind that you, you don't know where it goes or how it operates. Like, that's enough conflict. Yeah, it's, it's really... I thought it was a very bizarre decision to have them somehow follow them the Ghost Wind. Because as far as I'm aware, the Imperium travels via the warp the entire time. And this is not the warp. Or yeah. or it is the warp and it's to be explained in the third book. But at the moment, I am thoroughly confused. Agreed. Despite Agreed. this all, this is when Ultix is like really kind of seething and coping. Oh, um yeah. But then they actually get do get to a, a pretty great part, which is when they get boarded by the Blood Angels. Mm -hmm. And the Blood Angels are are Giga Chads in this in this book. <laughs> yes, they are. This uh, is the you, Blood Angels fan book. If, if you're you like yeah. Blood Angels, you want to read this one, yeah. If you like Blood Angels, and especially if you like Death Company, because <laughs> it was kind of funny reading it and, and watching them fight off all these fight off all these Blood Angels, and they're you know saying they're immortals up, but then the the Blood Angels have like jetpacks and they're dropping plasma bombs on them and all this stuff. Mm -hmm. But then, then Old Six is fighting their chaplain, ah, and yes. and he stabs the chaplain in like the stomach or something. Mm -hmm. I, I forget. And then all the Death Company are like, Horus. <laughs> that's you, right, you, he, motherfucker. <laughs> yeah, that's right. He gets the same wound. That Sanguinius got from Horus, right? And they're all, and they all just sort of start seething, and I'm assuming that's the black rage that they're falling to. Yeah, they all start just going maniacal. And they start ripping Lichgard apart, and they're yeah. and like, oh no. <laughs> yeah, like why are they fighting so hard now? They're fighting way harder. What the fuck is this? And then, uh, but then after that, you get a uh, Baraka to come save the day. Oh, and boy. Um, yeah, Baraka makes a uh, makes a bitch out of the uh, Blood Angels. Even with the Black Rage, Baraka comes in and just annihilates. He slams his face into like a fucking pillar nineteen times. Yup, he goes Hulk smash on him. He's oof. The uh, I must admit though, I I, may, I don't know what the stipulations are of writing a forty k book, mm -hmm. but I I had this weird feeling of like requiring them i don't know if this is true or not but um the necrons got their recent range update right new models and ship mm -hmm. a all of baraka's destroyers are new models oh, okay also the little the little uh Theron that was a crypto thrall that the warlock was controlling crypto thralls are also new models and uh... So okay. Baraka had four destroyers. He had a uh, Scorpec Lord. He had the the Slithery Ophidian destroyer, the six pistoled Hexmark, and the Locust Heavy with the giant gun. Okay. And it was, I don't know if it's a requirement, but the fact that each and every one of them was in there, and their new models, my my tinfoil hat is on a little bit. Uh it is a new book, and I mean, you might as well use the new minis. I mean, if you can get a little bit of uh, double advertising in there, why not? I, I, yeah. Yeah, I, I could see them at least strongly recommending that maybe consider using some of these characters that are now for sale minis on the shop, eh? A yeah. So I'm, I'm a little tinfoil hatty on that, but, uh, um... But besides that whole whole stick, um, the whole the fighting the Blood Angels was cool. I wish there was more. They, the, Zoltanek and Ultix like duo fight the Terminators, mm -hmm. and I wish there was more of that. 
a back-to-back -back, like young Ultix and just enormous it's Zoltanek, Zoltanek who's yeah. like like fifty percent bigger than Ultix, just wa like wailing on people with his hammer. Yep. I'm I'm sad we didn't get more of that. I wouldn't mind just a solo Zoltanek book, like a book that's just like, oh yeah, well done Ultix, you you did your thing, and now we just follow Zoltanek on his wacky zany adventures. I would love that. I, I'd like a short story. I don't think Zoltanek okay. could be a major character because I think his little sh gimmick and his voice would get old Maybe if he's the, right. the main character, but he is fun. Short story, then. I'll, I'll, I'll short short story. Then. Sure, sure, sure. Um, but what is it? After they deal with all the Blood Angels and shit, um, well, they, uh, they Zoltanek never... rams their fuck. Oh, the, right. It ends with them fighting a Dreadnought. Yeah. It, it was yes. weird, like, because, uh, you know, I, every time I've heard about Dreadnoughts, they seem like absolute monsters. Like, holy shit, the Dreadnought will turn the tide of battle. There, you, if, you, if you're if you fighting a Dreadnought, you better have another Dreadnought. And uh, it seemed like Ultix just kind of was like, ah, Dreadnought, that's ah, bitch meat. And then just deals with it very quickly. Yeah. Yeah, I I'm I had that feeling a little bit just in this book in general, where I kind of was going back to thinking about my my my, my nice little Night Lord books, and I <laughs> I kind of appreciated that despite the fact that the Night Lords are are demigods, they felt way more mortal than Ultix ever does. Ultix oh, yeah. feels like laughably overpoweredly strong which i mean necron don't get me necron. wrong yeah, but it was kind of it was kind of supporting that he never felt in danger yeah he always felt like he could body whatever he deals with like everything he feels like he can body yeah um and even if he can't body it he like re relocates and gets his body rebuilt and mm -hmm. uh, yeah i was so shocked that like the dreadnought put up zero fight like, the Dreadnought was, was taken to Pound Town very oh, quickly. Yeah. Very quickly. Ultix just kind of walks up to it and is like, this is some bitch fuel. And then just kind of wrecks it. Um, yeah. Though the big reveal at the end of that is uh, he thinks nobody is watching him. And uh, he's he's sort of at the sarcophagus and he's looking at the like the little uh, almost dead inside. And in a fit of rage, the Dreadnought pilot tries to like bite him. And Ultix tries to bite back. Ultix doesn't try to bite back. He, he does, does bite. bite back. Yeah, 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 yeah. And that 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 part I thought was great. Mm -hmm. That scene right there when I heard like and he decided to take a bite. I'm like, oh my god. Yep. That was like holy shit. Oh, I, I was yep, shocked. That's, that's where we're going. Oh my god. Oh my god. <laughs> that that was a great scene. That was a fantastically written scene. It caught me super off guard, but in the in the good way that didn't feel unearned. Yeah. Definitely. It felt very much earned. It felt very much like, holy shit. Yep. Because, like I said, they, they had been sort of planting seeds for this to happen. And then when it finally does, it's like, oh, God, it actually, oh, boy. Oh, boy. Oh, boy. Mm. Oh, boy. Um, also, Shy said, so you can say Rain did for Dreadnought fans what Brutal Cunnan did for Night fans. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> not, a little not, bit. <laughs> not quite that bad. They didn't, he didn't kill, like, three Dreadnoughts. Like, it's true. Where where they annihilated like seven knights or something? Yeah, that dreadnought had no offense though. It didn't do anything. It just got wrecked. So yeah, yeah, yeah. Poor yeah, not 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 a good book for dreadnought fans. Definitely. No, it was it was a bit wrecked. But but that part is really solid. And right after biting that dude, Ultix is like, "Well, guess I'll die then." <laughs> Pretty much, he takes his fancy little ship and he's just like, "Yeah, I'm just gonna fly into the Lystragonian and uh, it fuck this." Yep, and the, even even like Zoltanek breaks the Lystragonian in two by like ramming it or something. Yeah, yeah he which, rams which, like which was, right through it with his ship. Yeah, which was really random because I was like, "Wow, it was that easy." <laughs> he just he just cut it in half by just ramming Zoltanek's ship. He could have done this at any point. Why yeah. didn't he? Why wait until now? Why not do that before? And yeah, yeah. It, it, it's like I was shocked how fast the damn ship died. And then he sent like Baraka, and they sent Baraka and his destroyers to go deal with all the space marines on that ship, and they're never seen or heard from again. Yeah, I it, assumed it, assumed dead, which is weird. Wait, I thought he sent Baraka and and his cult just out. To, like on a on a on a ship and just was like okay see ya 
And they just I thought, drift I thought in the he, ghost wind forever. I thought he sent them to go deal with the remaining space marines from the Lystragonian trying to put the ship together, I thought. Um, I thought Am he I wrong? Decided, I, I So here's what I thought happened. And uh, chat can correct us and tell us which one of us is right or wrong. It's been a little bit since I read it, so I could be mistaken too. Um, but I thought he sent Baraka and his uh, his cult uh, into like their own little pod and just sort of jettisoned them into the dead wind or the ghost wind. And it's like they would just they would just wait until someone found them and then just have a feast and then just go crazy once they were found. And then um, Ultix would try and go deal with whatever was happening on, like, the Lystragonian and everything and give the rest of his dynasty time to, like, get away because he's like, oh, God, I fucked up. I'm such a bad leader. So I'm going to die to sort of give them time to escape. I, I think... I, I didn't really get his motivation too well of why he wanted to kill himself. Yeah. Besides his, him falling to the Flare Curse and him yeah. killing all the other guys. Yeah. Him realizing it, it, that he, he had fallen to the Flare Curse and everybody knew he had fallen to the Flare Curse. So, And, and even that, yeah. It, it, and then he basically just flies out with Packet, yeah. the Lich Guard, who's, who's remained a really awesome character. She said she said nothing, but she's like his personal assistant Lich Guard. She's always been there helping him every time. She has a very she's a very Boba Fett style vibe to her where, where mm. she's she doesn't really say or much, but she does enough to make her interesting. Yeah. At least in, in Empire Strikes Back, that is. Had, hadn't she also was she the one that also fell to the flare curse, except she wanted Ultix to be her executioner, and then at the very last second they... No, that was the Agora Nomos, the grain guy. Oh, okay, gotcha. That, that was the grain boy, and, okay. and which which he took over as Yenex thing, and he, he actually grain boy actually did okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He was all right. Um, yeah, I got but, those mixed up. Okay, but he he died. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't know. Like, well, I don't remember if Grain Boy died. I don't know if he did or not. But um, but no, Ultix died, and then they got taken aboard the. Was the Lystragonian? Which ship was that? I think it was the Lystragonian, but his death was really like Ultix's death was weird. It, it it was I I that whole scene I didn't understand what the fuck was happening. Yeah, like he like his ship gets shot, and then he gets shot, and then like. He, it's like, he oh, like yeah, hallucinates. Ultix dies, but then he's like, oh, I didn't die because, like, all of my memories and all of my being and all of Jasir's and all of, uh, uh, Unis's, uh, was it Unis? I don't know. Anyway, uh, everybody's memories were, like, implanted in his flux that was, like, floating around in space so he could, like, decide who he wanted to be be or something so he could decide if he wanted to be Jasiris the king or if he wanted to be flawed Ultix and he was like oh I guess I'd better be Ultix because that's what I've always been and then he kind of just wakes up in the heart of the Lystragonian it was very weird it was I it was very weird I didn't understand jack all with that entire part yeah, it was it was very confusing. I read it a couple times and I'm like, I still have no fucking idea what happened. He he yeah, he 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 died, but he I guess was allowed to choose what Necron he wanted to be reincarnated in as and he was like, "Oh, I'm so attached to Ultix and he made up everything I was, so I guess I better be him again and uh, uh, and he gets he, reincarnated as not King Ultix." Yeah, I it was really weird. That whole scene, I was I had a big puzzled look on my face when I was listening to it. I yeah. did not understand what was going on. Agreed. Um, but he, he wakes up and he, in this the lower chambers of this area, and then Packet's there, yeah. and that the scene with Packet's really fucking good. It makes me really sad because I was like, oh shit, she would have been a great character if they kept her around. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But you know, she has all this things like, yeah, I I taught you how to use the glaive when you were a kid. Yep. I was your I was your tutor, your instructor, and you sucked at it. <laughs> hey, you were awful with that thing. You were a bitch. And he's like, Oh yeah, I was. You were trash, but <laughs> you had a, you had a good heart 
too good of a heart. That was your problem. You couldn't be a good Necron leader. Mm -hmm. uh, but and then what did, he, what did he say? It's like, how, how did I do as a king? And she was like, ah, you were better than Unas. <laughs> and it's just like, oh, Real thanks. Bar. Yeah, thanks. Yeah, fucker. <laughs> Yep. It was it was really that part was good. The the ending with Packet was surprisingly well done. Like everything after Ultix's death is pretty solid. Oh yeah, definitely. Because then go with that, yeah. Because then he finds Yennick and all the flayed ones in the ship. Yeah, he did, and, which is and, also weird. I'm not sure how Yennick got in there. Oh, I, I get that. Um, because they're in the Ghost Wind, and since he's a Flayed now, he they can oh, travel around. Oh, you're right. You, okay. I guess I didn't realize that the Ghost Wind was a specific, like, Flayed One's transportation device. That's true. That's right, because uh, uh, Ultix actually talks a little bit more about how he's able to move in the Ghost Wind once he, uh, you know. Yeah. Um, it's like whatever the way they do that. But that was the idea, Was was like... That this is what took a turn for the for the better. It was yeah. The, these flayed ones are they are my people despite their illness. They shouldn't be cast out. They should be treated yeah. with respect. Yeah, and then boy, do those flayed ones go fucking absolutely hog wild on the Lystra. <laughs> that that's that was really <laughs> super dope. That that whole thing, I I really like that whole part because it's very it's very much like a. Hey, these are your people, Ultix. Mm -hmm. The flayed ones are not something that you should be ashamed of. It is not a sickness. It is simply what you are. Do not cast out your people. Instead, treat them well, and they will follow you. Yep. And, and Yedek, too. And, and so then he's like, all right. It's now Ultix, king of the flayed ones. Yep. And then they just go ham. Oh, man. They... they Rip the ship apart. Yep. They the 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 Imperium and the Lystra go. They have no chance. They they're, get they're absolutely literally absolutely overrun and decimated. They are literally in your walls. Oh yes, they're, they're in your they're, walls. They're coming to eat you. Yep. Because they're in the Ghost Wind, which means that they can literally teleport anywhere on the ship that they want at all times. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. they're just they're like running. They're they're running on all fours with these like long bladed rictus grin looking robots, yep. just like running at Mach five, but with completely silent. And they're coming out of grates and and ripping yep. open walls and grabbing people and dragging them into the dark to be like sliced to ribbons. Yep. It's and, and even Yennick gets his like <laughs> he the razor of Seda can finally be unveiled. You know. Mm hmm. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. It's... Whew, yeah, and uh, they, they do such a good job that the rest of the Imperium is just like, fuck this shit, I'm out. Like, uh-uh. We're not dealing with the flayed ones. We are out of here. Fuck this. Yeah, it's... It's very... A very, very, very satisfying ending. Oh, yeah. The, the whole the whole part of them running through the ship murdering people is written phenomenally. Oh, God, yeah. Yeah, yeah. It's so badass. I'm yeah, just I'm it, just imagining like like a like a in a, in a film like a side shot of Voltix like running through the fucking place and you see Flay ones <laughs> like 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 running past him and like grabbing the people to his side and stuff. Mm -hmm. You get this one long tracking shot type thing, you know? Yep. And they're all like crawling on the walls around him like this just big wave of insects of and they're just flayed ones. Yeah. yeah, and you and you can hear like the screeching and the like the like nails on chalkboards yep, and, the, and stuff. The, the, like the sort of chittering sound of uh of metal on on uh metal claws skittering around on the deck yeah. it's it's really good it the the last hour and a half of this book is is pretty fucking great oh yeah um and and the book ends with them kind of rejoining i guess mentep's dead <laughs> yeah mentep is is dead uh the big reveal is zot is actually mentep's version of the uh of the sub mines that uh it's like it's like mentep's scarab so it's meant to have scarab. Technically, a part of him is still alive-ish, but Mentep is dead. Yeah, it's uh, yeah, yeah. Um, and and then at the end they make it to Drazak. Yep, and there's not a whole lot on Drazak. There's, there's literally jack all. There's nothing there. There was no reason to be afraid. Is is literally just an empty uh sort of white palace. An empty, pa like, yeah, white palace. I think that was kind of like the idea of, um, you know that part in Nier where you had, like, the copied city? 
That was like the remade city of all like white blocks and like white. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. I kind of, I kind of imagine it like that. Sure, I go with that. Um, yeah, and Ultix just takes his seat on on the throne. There was a to see, to see there, what's gonna happen. Yeah, there was like a there was like a, a crown that was waiting there for like whoever would lead or whoever had led before, and he was like, "Oh, I'll just sit here." I guess it's my crown. Yeah, yeah. It was kind of interesting uh, that the uh, it was surrounded by like the um, a debris field that had Necron ships from literally every era. Yeah, everyone always was coming there for some reason or yeah. another. And the Acrops like willingly took them there because the Acrops wanted to finally be at peace. And, the, and then the Acrops was like, "Guess I'll die," and flies into the sun. <laughs> yeah, <for new. laughs> Guess I'll just die here. <laughs> yep, and that's and that's then the end. then the book ends. Yeah, that's it. So yeah, I guess I guess Ultix is, Valgul. That's oh, the name. Oh, that was the Bone King Valgul. Yeah, 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 yeah. So that's the question: Is is Ultix? The new Valgul, like in terms of like the Lich King style with Frostmourne and like in in WoW, or is he was he Valgul the whole time? Oh, oh yeah, is it a prequel? Is he the Valgul originally? I don't know. The Valgul uh, was the friends we made along the way. <laughs> Shut the fuck up. <laughs> but I mean, we we we're hard, we're harder. We're probably both harder on this book than we actually consider it because it's it's certainly not bad. I I give it a, a firmly planted good. Oh yeah, it was definitely good. I just it made not me, great. Yeah, I think it had a it it had a large shadow to live in. Is is a big problem that it had. It's it was it was really it would have been really hard to live up to ruin because ruin was very very good. So it had big shoes to fill, and I don't think it quite filled them but that doesn't make it a bad book no i i think it definitely more so i mean it had some shoes to need to fill absolutely but I, I think it i feel like it could have used another two or three drafts a couple revisions mm -hmm. um just just like a little bit, a couple of look looks looking over to make sure that it flowed better um yeah the pacing it's, was cause kind one, all over the place yeah yeah, because Ruin was a tight book. It was it was so good. It was it it started a little slow, but that was kind of intentional. Yeah, and it, to build its way up, it was a great tragedy. It had almost no dull moments. Yeah, um, it was it was just really well made. It was it was nice, tight thing. And I feel like it's like when you do your first project and it's like nearly perfect, and then you have to do the sequel to it, and you're like, I don't really. I didn't plan for this. Yeah, how, like, how do I live up to that? Like, I got a, I literally got like a ninety nine point nine percent on my first project. I don't know how I'm gonna get that extra point one. Oh no. Yeah, it, it's, it's good, but it, it was, it's a bit sloppy. It's a bit. Yeah. Uh, needs a little bit more. It has all the parts to be a really good book from like the beginning, the part with the trebuchet, uh, uh, when they go to Carnotite and they're with the warlock, uh, like. Th they're all really good parts. It's just, you're right. Like they just kind of don't flow that well. And like, you almost feel like you don't get enough of these big moments because they feel this need to have like the, this constant chase going on. And yeah, it's, it's, it's good. Oh, I totally forgot. Dennett summoned the monoliths. That's right. Dennett, <laughs> he saved the Necrons. He summoned the monoliths. They only I, lasted I, for like two seconds, but it was just enough time to absorb that one blow that would have killed them. I got to be honest. I actually thought that scene wasn't handled very well. Well, the, yeah. The, the, I, I this, mean, despite a little like, like pacing, okay. like, yeah, the, yeah. like Ultix saw it, looked out. He's like, oh, the guns are about to fire. And Ultix looks out. And then it, it was like the next line was Dennett summoned the monoliths. <laughs> and I was like, no, too fast. You need to be like, yeah. and Ultix looked out and sees two oculars flaring in the Acrops. And he looks up and like, is that Dennett? Why is Dennett on the bridge? And then, and then, and then Dennett's, uh, and then it's like, oh, this oculars flared. And then a, a, a wisp of translocation arrives in front of him in the shape of a monolith. <laughs> like, that's... I think they need to be, like, said like that. Because he literally just said he summoned the monolith. Like, no, yeah. you had to build up to that. You've been setting this up for two books. Yeah, it's, it's been a joke for two books that he can't remember the password for the monolith. Then it's like he finally remembers it and you're over and done with it like that. It's just... 
Yeah. It, it needed more build up. It needed. It was. I'm happy it happened, but like it needed more. There was a part of me that was actually hoping the monoliths would like warriors would come out of the monolith and actually do something, but no, they they literally all they did was take tank to like big explosions. Yeah, that's it. I was I was actually kind of hoping that Dennett would summon actual warriors and the warriors would like help fight off the uh, Imperium or something, but nope, yeah. they just tanked a super blast from the Lystragonian. I think it was. Okay. Yeah. I think, yeah, save the A-crops, which is, you know, saving the A-crops pretty good. But. That's pretty good, but, yeah, I mean, for the big thing that you've been joking about for two whole books. It, you need you need it to give it a little bit more... Uh, you need more a little, payoff. A little more payoff. I, I needed some more payoff on that, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, all right. That's about it, I think. I don't have anything else I really think I need to say. No, I think we've, I think we've expressed our feelings on the book. It was, it was all right. It, yeah. It, after coming right off of ruin, a little mm, mid. It, it, it need an, it need another draft or two. It needs to be tightened up. Yeah. Uh, maybe maybe a few fewer like supplement sub, like them trying to figure out how to fix the drive in like the, the ship, or something mm -hmm. like that. Like you could have like taken away a plot point or two and instead stretched out the the warlock and, and the and the trebuchet. Like the trebuchet was pretty long already, but like. Okay. certain things and kind of figure that stuff out a little bit more it needed to be refined a little bit i think agreed um but it's uh it's still a fine book i'm still absolutely gonna read the next one. Oh hell yeah assuming, 100%. i'm assuming there's gonna be a next one right there's gonna be a third one i'm going to assume they're not just gonna end it with like oh yeah and ultix found peace on drazek and hooray he is the bone king and his subjects love him, and that's where they live forever, and underneath whatever that shroud thing is. I'm hoping they'll have a third one. What's the conflict, uh, though? Uh, Just Ultix it, leading as the Bone King? Leading, doing it, becoming it. Maybe the Imperium isn't quite dead. They just left. Oh, yeah. I mean, like, Psychor just kind of too. fucked off, you know? Like, you... Uh, I, yeah. I don't know. I mean, he had a goodbye message, but... That was pretty funny. You see, he was genuinely disappointed that he didn't murder him. <laughs> He's like, I'm sorry I couldn't perform treason on you. I really wanted to, but I just never quite had the chance. Yeah, it's, like, it's like, well, I stole 90% of your canoptic scarabs as well, and <laughs> I was going to kill you with all of them, but damn. I never got the chance. I'm sorry. I'm not I'm very sorry. good. I'm sorry. I'm not very good at my job, am I? Damn, I'm damn, a, damn. <laughs> I'm a bad death mark. Yeah, but good luck. Yeah, it's funny ass yep, dude. There he goes. Yep. All right, so a, a tentative recommend, but um, yeah. at, hot off the heels of ruin could have been a little better. Agreed. Yeah, it was all right. Uh, it, was, it was. It was fine. It yeah. was fine. Um, yeah. I'm. I'm more at the moment. I'm in like that situation where I'm more. I'm like, the book is not as is far from bad or anything, but I'm a little frustrated by it. Yeah. And so I feel more negative towards it, despite the fact that it's not actually that bad. Yeah. Not a bad book. Just had a hard time living up to ruin. Yeah. All right. Yep. Well, in that case, that's our book club. Our next book will be... Ooh, hey. I Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm interested. What's our next book? I, I don't know. Oh. I'm well, sorry. I thought I, I don't know. A fucking buzzkill. Jesus. I, man. I don't know. I don't know. I'm sitting here and I'm like, oh man, I don't even know what the next book is. And he's going to. Oh shit. Yeah, man. Let's go. What's the, what's he gonna do? And Fifty just... Shades of Grey. Oh no. Twilight. Breaking Dawn Part One. Yeah. We're no. Just read all four parts of uh, Twilight. No. Just read Part One. <laughs> read Part Two. Half of Part Two. The, the, the three-fourths of the ending of part two is what we're going with. All right. Let's get the fuck right. out of here. Let's get the fuck out of here. Yeah. Just shenanigans. <laughs>